Hello everybody, I am Sean Powers and today in this micro nugget we are going to learn to create SSH key pairs that will allow us to log into a remote server without entering a password at all. Now it sounds like a really cool trick, but danger Will Robinson, this is a security issue that you need to be aware of. What this will do, it will allow you to log into a remote server without any password. As long as that as long as your public key file is installed on the remote server, anybody with your private key, usually just you, can log in without a password. Now, if that, if that private key gets compromised, changing your system password will not invalidate the key pair files. So, just changing your password will not protect you if that if the private key that we're going to make today gets compromised. With all that, it's a very convenient way to be able to use SSH inside of a script so that you don't have to worry about entering the password. You know, the script can be automated and work without your interaction. So it's a powerful tool, but you need to know just how dangerous it can be if your private keys get released. But now that we've said all that, let's go to the command line and actually learn how to create a key pair and how to install it on a remote server. All right, now before we actually create the key pairs, what I want to do is show you what I have going. So on the left here with the green text, this is our local computer that we're logged into, the Zubuntu box right here that we're that you see. Over here, this is another window, and there's another terminal window with white text that I've actually logged into a remote server with the CBT user, and the name of the server is server. Now, I've done that so that I can show you what happens on a remote server when we create and install a key pair. So this is a remote server on the right. This is our local computer on the left. Anyway, first we're going to look inside the .ssh folder of our home directory. So ls.ssh. You'll see in there all there is is a known hosts file. This is just a list of the hosts that we've already connected to so that our SSH client knows, okay, I've already gone there, it's a safe place to go. But it has nothing to do with key pairs and authentication. To do that, first we need to create some key pairs because if we don't have key pairs, there's nothing to install. So to do that, type ssh-keygen and hit enter. Now it's going to say, where do you want to save these key pairs that I'm going to create? Well, we're going to save it in the default location, so just hit enter, and enter the passphrase. Now if I leave this blank, which is what I'm going to do, it's going to allow us to log in without using a password. Now that's dangerous, but it's also the purpose of this micro nugget. So I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to hit enter again without typing any passphrase. Now we'll see down here that it says, okay, it's done, it's created the public and the private key pair. Now in order to look at that, let's clear the screen and type ls ssh again. So now inside our .ssh folder, we still have known hosts, but we have id underscore rsa. This is our private key, which we should never show to anybody, and it should never be copied to any other systems. The private key stays with us on our workstation, on, our, on this Zubuntu box that we're sitting on. The id underscore rsa dot pub file is the public key. It doesn't matter who sees this. This can be seen by the whole world because if somebody installs this on their server, the only security risk is that it allows me to log in with my private key. So we don't care who sees the pub file. In fact, let's look at it right now. Cat dot ssh id underscore rsa dot pub. And here we go. This is the public key which we're going to install over on this remote server so that we can log in without using a password. Now to go about doing that, we could just copy this this text, so like edit, copy, and then over here create a file in the .ssh folder called authorized keys and paste that text into it because this is our this text is our public key. If we did that, when we tried to log in over SSH to this remote server, it would check and say, okay, you have a private key that matches a public key that's already been installed in my authorized keys file, I'm gonna let you in. And we could do that. That's a perfectly legitimate way to install a public key. However, with Ubuntu and its variants and a few other distributions, there's a really cool command line tool called SSH copy ID. So we're gonna use that right now to show you how to install it without worrying about copying and pasting and et cetera, et cetera. So type SSH dash copy ID and then dash lowercase i for the identity file, which in our case is dot SSH ID underscore RSA dot pub. Again, don't use the pub, don't use a private key here because we're not going to copy our private key anywhere. We're just going to copy our public key to the remote server. Now what remote server? It's going to be CBT at server, right? This is the server we want to connect to without using a password. So we'll say cbt, which is the username, at server, which is our server's address. Now this would be like a fully qualified domain name if you were installing an SSH key onto a server on the internet somewhere, but in my local network it's just called server. 
So I would type all that, I would press enter, and it would say, all right, I'm attempting to install one key on a remote server. You have to type the name of the CBT user's password so that I can log in and add that key. Now we didn't log in without a key at first because there's no key installed, right? We have to log in one time in order to install that key. So I'm going to type in my password. This is the password of the CBT user on the server. Hit enter. It's going to say, okay, I have added one key to the remote server. Now in order to try, you know, test it out, all you have to do is type SSH CBT at server. Now what actually happened over here though, I want to show you. So let's type ls.ssh and you'll see we have authorized keys and known host. Now this authorized keys file is what we just created using the ssh copy id command. Let's look and see what's in there. cat.ssh authorized keys. All right, it looks like the exact same text that was inside our id rsa.pub file, which is what we would expect, right? All it did is copy this text into the file authorized keys. Now it's possible to have more than one public key installed on a system, so if there was already an existing authorized keys file, it would have just pasted it at the end, I and mean, we have multiple public keys listed here. But in our case, we just have the one authorized key, which is that public key we just created. So we did all that so that now we can test it. This is the moment of truth. Let's try it on our local machine to ssh to cbt at server. Bam, we got into the server. We didn't have to type a password at all because the public key is installed in the authorized keys file on the remote server. It's a very powerful tool. Now we could add SSH commands into scripts and not worry about being prompted for a password, but it's also very powerful and very scary because if anybody gets a hold of our private key, they can get into the CBT at server account without any passwords. Even if we change the password over here, we would still be able to get in with this public and private key. All right, so it's scary, it's powerful, but it's an awesome way to connect to a remote server. I know that was a little bit complicated, but that's all there is to creating SSH key pairs. The big thing you have to understand is what's going on so you know what files to protect. <laughs> and if your keys do get compromised, just be sure to delete the public key from your remote server. Once that public key is deleted from the authorized keys file, bam, the danger is gone because that private key doesn't do diddly. <laughs> I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.